Hey there. Something which is very important when we run proper accounts is to make sure that revenue and expenses are recorded for the months they matter. And some cases like prepayment can mess up that by having big expenses. So in this video, we're going to see how prepayments are recorded and how the amortization of such prepayment can be recorded very quickly in Xero. Let's go on. Okay, we are now in Xero. And the first step is, of course, to receive the bill, the invoice from the supplier. Let's take the example of an insurance premium. So we're receiving an invoice from Aviva, say from mid-April, which will be due within 30 days. And the reference is given by the invoice of the supplier. Let's consider A2019-007. It's for an insurance premium for Let's consider May 2019 to April 2020. So one year, starting May, so starting two weeks after receiving the invoice. The amount will be 12,000. The account should be prepayment, so we don't impact the PNL at this stage. We could attach a document to have the supporting uh, invoice, and that's what we do. So that's the initial record. From there, what happens? One way is to use a manual journal to record a debit credit transferring the prepayment to the expense account. But manual journal come with a few issues, including it's too difficult to do. Let's make it more simple. Let's see what's in this drop-down menu. See, there is a repeat option. What does this do? It creates a repeating bill. Let's fill one by one the different field. We want this transaction to repeat every one month. Yes, we want the annual premium prepayment to be passed into a monthly expense impacting the insurance. We'll pick the bill date, so that would be the first one. In this case, we're recording for a few months back, so it will be May. Let's say we want to record in first of the month. Due date. There is no real due date because we're not gonna pay anything. So we can do whatever we want. Let's say we do zero day after the bill date. End date. This one is important. We want this repeating bill to run for 12 months. So the last one should be on 1st of April 2020. Let's say the end date is then 2nd of April 2020, which means it will run for 12 times and stop. We could save it as draft, which would mean we would have to check again, but there is no reason it would change over time. So let's just approve it so it will record automatically, which means we'll have nothing to do. The bill is from Aviva. So here we see that the contact information is in the, uh, in the contact itself is in the prepayment amortization. And the reference comes from the invoice number. We can add a placeholder, which will allow to see the months and year for which it's applicable. Description, and etc. cetera, are already pre-filled. So that saves a lot of time. We can just add information, amortization of prepayment for, and I can add a pre, uh, a placeholder again, months here. The amount should be one twelfth of that. I could calculate and type it, or I can use the fact that in zero, I can type divided by 12, does it for me. That's my prepayment. I will put it as negative to offset my prepayment. And I will duplicate this line, copy and paste, for the other amount, pass it into the insurance account. Let's stop for a second here. We see I did a minus prepayment and plus insurance. Because we're in zero bill to pay, the usual transaction is a debit. So a positive amount means a debit, a negative means a credit. So I have my debit credit here. The so total is zero, which means it will not impact my payable. Let's save. Cool, I have my repeating transaction ready to act and to April 2020. My awaiting payment is only for my initial transaction. And I have a few bills which are automatically paid because the amount is zero, there is nothing to pay. Let's look at the different reports. On the balance sheet, I expect to see my prepayment and the amortization. Let's go for end of last month, a few months past. And effectively, I see in April, I have my 12K prepayment, which is payable. And in this case, I didn't record the payment itself. And the prepayment reduces by 1,000 every month as the expense is being recorded. 
let's go on the PNL. Same. Let's do a few months past. And I see the PNL is only impacted by the actual expense of 1,000 a month. So my prepayment does not impact it. My accounts are very regular. So no big bump on the months of the prepayment. The next report, which is very useful, is this account transaction report, where we can check the different accounts impacted. So prepayment, payable, and insurance. Let's look for the period. We see there is one transaction in payables for the actual supplier bill. Insurance is my monthly debit, and the prepayment has an initial debit and the monthly credit which offset it. At the end of the year, the balance will be zero. So I effectively recorded my prepayment and the monthly amortization in less than five minutes, which means it's very easy to do. And I have all the information with the contact, the months for what it is, even the invoice reference to calculate the schedule very efficiently.